Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 7 of my Palomo FIFA 16 Career Mode Series. First up here, we've got a game against Empoli. They're in 19th, and it's a home game for us. So I'm actually going to simulate this game because you would see this game as a win. We've been pretty decent so far this season for the expectations as well. So let's see if we can get a win against them. And as expected, we do. Vazquez getting a brace. Been really good this season, and he's been improving as a season has gone on because I'm learning the kind of player he is and everything like that and also you may notice a slight different sound in my voice or something like that and that is because I've got a new microphone the one I was using basically up until now has just gotten a bit old and I noticed in some of my videos they have like a little tick or something maybe once or twice in the video you have to listen really closely for it to be honest not sure if anyone noticed that in my videos uh, tick. I'm not sure how to explain it. Just a little slight noise. I think just because of error from the microphone because it's been yeah, dropped a few times. But hopefully this new one sounds alright. I haven't really tested it yet. Just one time before recording this right now. So I may have to play with settings a little bit. But let me know if it does sound alright. And for any YouTubers, other YouTubers out there, it is the blue snowball, which is pretty cheap, which I kind of had to go for at the minute. <laughs> uh, don't have too much funds at the minute, so I have to go for this one, which is a great option for a starting YouTuber. But anyway, Thomas Toure, look how well he's gone. I'm impressed how he's improved his finishing. It says plus two, but when I signed him, his finishing was 68, as I'm sure you remember. That's why I signed him as well. Like, if you find a striker that has really good technical attributes, well, it says he's left midfield, but he plays striker as well. That's another good thing about him. But the thing is, if an attribute is just a few levels below acceptable for you, you can just train them. Like it was 68 and now it's 73, that's 5 extra and now you would see that as acceptable. I'm sure you would anyway. So yeah, uh, leave your thoughts on, on just training players to become like an acceptable... Oh, it, it depends, like he's still a good player. His finishing was a bit lower than I wanted it to be. But anyway, that's just one player. We've got a lot of others. And also there's Kochev as well. He's another guy that I really... Uh, I wish he was a bit better because he seems like a good player. Like he's in the early 20s, um, his age. And I just... I want him to be good, but I think he's just below what I need him to be. Uh, Carlos Mbalo, if he comes back next season and we give him a chance, maybe he could be all right. He's someone we probably need to work on with his shooting attributes. And also someone I want to talk about, Stefan Sorrentino. He's been actually really good. He's been making some good saves. And also Kievo here, they're 18th. So I am going to simulate two games in this episode and they're both teams in the relegation zone so you can understand why and they're at home for us as well. You would see them as games we would win and Thomas Toure starting to score some goals now. Unfortunately, Gonzalez uh, picks up an injury for about a week. That should be okay because we have a good break in between next game and he'll be playing the next game anyway. So I'll simulate those two but then there's a good chance I probably won't simulate a game at least in the next episode. Not sure about... Uh, the following one, because we do have important games coming up. So, yeah, it just depends on the balance. It doesn't mean I'm going to be simulating every two games, f like every episode now, like two games in episode. It just depends which games I have coming, like I'm showing you right now. I've got a cup game, like I've got Juventus in this episode as well, Lazio and away games in the league coming up. So, probably for the next couple episodes, I won't even simulate a game. So it'll even itself out over the season. So as you can see here, uh, we're just changing up the training for a little bit because yeah, some players have uh, gone out for international duty. And again, Kochev, I want to give him a chance, but you look at his attributes and he's really lacking. Uh, I don't know what attributes I want to improve with him, to be honest, maybe uh, leave your thoughts, but I want to improve his shooting. Like, Finishing is only 61, so, or 60, it's going to improve to 61, so that's something I want to work on. Uh, Golden Eager as well, I've been consistently training him, like, I think if I keep training him, he could become a really, really good centre-back for us, because he seems to be developing fairly well. Also, Lazar, you know, consistently throughout the season, when I've trained him, I want to work on the finishing especially, that needs to be improved, because he's playing an attacking position, he's not playing left-back, which is his normal position. He can play left midfield as well, obviously, uh, we're playing him in that role, but he, as a natural left back, as his main position, his finishing wouldn't be too high. So, yeah, we're just going to work on that a bit more, and hopefully 
he can make the impact. But as we've signed Kynes now, he's finding a position for himself in the team in that left midfield position. He's very attacking. And I wanted him... Because we needed to start to score more goals. We had a few nil-nils at the start of the season. So, yeah, that kind of change could help. But here, Lazio, I felt kind of confident going into this game. Because, you know, I have a Lazio save in Football Manager. But, Philippe Anderson, that was too good. He did really well to get past. He changed lanes a little bit there to get into the box. And he fooled me, to be honest. And my confidence was cut short as Philippe Anderson. He's really good in career mode as well. He's one of those good players like, with potential. But the thing is, he's good right away. See right there, changed lanes. He cut in. And yeah, that's really bad looking on it. It was just hard to defend. He's one of those unpredictable players. Just, yeah, skillful Brazilian. It's similar to Neymar, in, in at least using him in career mode anyway. He's a good, yeah, pacey, dribbling type good skills as well, but now Lazio on the ball, could they almost, well not finish it off, but make it really, really hard to get something from this game, but they offside, Sorrentino made the save anyway, can we play out of defense here, can we create an opportunity, so we played into Heilemark right now, he's a key player for the team, obviously number 10, number 10 is <laughs> the crucial player uh, for the team, but he's not going to be a high goal scoring player from a deep central midfield position, so yeah, that's interesting, and Vazquez wins a penalty here, will be interesting to see on the replay, because it didn't look, like on first look anyway, it was such a clear penalty, like it wasn't so outrageous as my player, he just fell, but yeah, I suppose he did impede him a little bit, Arroyo, been consistent throughout the season, and again, that is a textbook penalty for FIFA 16. Goalkeepers aren't going to save that, especially, yeah, like more often than not anyway, even if they guess the right way. It's just, yeah, too much power. Accuracy as well, really, really good. And that's his fourth goal so far in the Serie A. Not too bad for a new signing, and especially playing most in right midfield position doing really, really well, but Lazio put in a dangerous cross, what a save once more for Sorrentino, like I mentioned, he's backing up my opinion on him, and yeah, what he's done this season, making really good saves, Onazi strikes, and Sorrentino makes the save again, what a game, he's keeping us in it, like, just to get a draw at this current point in time, they may have another opportunity here, it's closer, Mirosov closer, the experienced striker, Sorrentino comes up and makes the save, could he make another one, Kondreva strikes, Sorrentino, what a game he is having, people told me to recall Viviano, but look how good he's doing, we have a late opportunity to win it, unfortunately the strike is not good enough, so there was our opportunity, they had a few more in the game, but we could have stole it late to be honest, Unfortunately, yeah, Vazquez, I think it was, was a bit tired. You saw that from his strike, was a bit weak. But I'm more than happy to get a draw from that game. To me, the man of the match, player of the match, was Sorrentino with his saves. So what do you think about him now? Do you think we should recall Viviano right now? Because Sorrentino is making some excellent saves. And it's going to be his last season. Viviano is going to come back for the next season. I think he's a couple higher ratings than him. He's like 80 rated, so... He should be equally as good as him anyway. So I think goalkeeper situation, having those experienced goalkeepers, Sorrentino for this season, then Viviano, I think will be set. We don't have to spend money we, so we can save in kind of that area and then, yeah, spend on outfield players. I don't genuinely like to spend too much for goalkeepers. So it's good we have, like, Sorrentino, like, it doesn't look like a good goalkeeper to have with his age, but he's performing at the minute and with his contract running out. Surely he will retire at 36 years old, isn't he? 36 would be 37, so... Yeah, I would expect he would retire anyway. I'm not sure if we could actually offer him a new contract. We'll have to try that out, maybe. But you probably don't think I should do that. But maybe I need a young guy coming through. And we have a big game here against Juventus, and we do concede. Was a bit disappointed, because first 30 minutes, we did defend pretty well. We didn't concede chances or anything like that. And the cross there, look, I think it came off my defender there. And then it just went into the space, right into the lane for Marquisio, and gave him a really good opportunity, and he was able to finish. But yeah, just giving you my thoughts, my experience in this game, I just played before, actually, 
uh, before recording this, and I felt I did pretty well defending Juventus in this game. We have an opportunity there, Arroyo getting involved. He creates a lot for us, whether it be actually creating chances or then shots on goals himself from the corner, free kick. He does everything. Again, not the best header there. It was a hard one to header uh, well, to be honest. So 60 minutes through. Thomas Toure, can he win a free kick after skilling past Cadera? He does. And Juventus, I showed you the table. They're just having a dominant season. And who's that? Uh, Mario Lamina. But Arroyo, the free kick specialist, can he do it again? He hits it really well, but Neto makes the save. And Lamina, he did uh, pick up that yellow card. But again, Arroyo, that was a pretty decent effort. Like, it would be hard to beat the goalkeeper from there. But we are starting to create a few chances now. Quayson, Vazquez, can he find someone? Look at all the players Juve have back right now. It's really hard to break them down. Like, if I go for it, like, if I take a shot or try and dribble past, there's a good chance they tackle, like, there. But Kynes was able just to get past with the bit of extra pace he does have. It was a good opportunity. And now, towards the end of the game, last couple minutes, Juventus... We're actually wasting time in the corner. So we're probably going to go on to lose now. But I took so much out of that. Juve were wasting time against us when they were only winning 1-0. Like, <laughs> to me, that gave me a lot of confidence. Shows they were nervous. Well, oh, to be honest, that's just scripted into FIFA for teams to waste time and run to the corner in the last couple minutes when they're winning. But still, if we're going to be realistic about it, I'll take something out of that. Uh, Juve playing defensive against us almost scared in a way. They didn't really want to go for another goal. So, again, I will take something out of that. Always disappointing to lose, but you saw from the table, as I mentioned, Juve dominant team this season. They And it was hard to win those one-on-one -on -one battles late. If you play a career mode like this, and when you are playing against a better team, like a much better team, like every single player is better than your other player, like the one-on-one -on -one battles, they always win, especially late in the game. It makes it really hard to score a late goal. And the thing is, we had eight shots on target to two. So even though we lose that, like I take so much out of it. I felt we created good opportunities. Maybe we could have scored one. Maybe we could have got lucky. But I wouldn't say get lucky. I think we deserve one. But anyway, that will be it for now. Hopefully, uh, this video sounds all right as well. As I mentioned, with new microphone, leave your thoughts. But for now, that's going to be it. Drop a like on the video as well if you want to see more of this series. And I'll see you guys in the very next video.